Hello, YouTube. Runa here. Okay, back with part three. Um, okay, let me see if I can turn my laptop over. Yeah, we go. So, part two is actually uploading currently. So, I am here to, again to talk about my first impressions and experiences with Lucifer. And I told you in the last video that I was going to start with my story again. So, for those of you who may not have seen the last video, I was talking about what happened when I first came out of a really abusive time where he was being used as a weapon to abuse me and ensnare me and a lot of stuff when I was coming out of Catholicism, all sorts of stuff. Again, I will say, this is why... Do not take anyone's word for it. Do your own research. Don't let anybody tell you what something is because they are bullshitting you most of the time. <laughs> I mean, not everyone's a liar. I'm not saying everyone's a liar, but if someone's telling you they got a connection to some kind of god or deity, okay, you are perfectly capable of having that connection. They don't have to speak to the divine on your behalf. Do not let them do it yourself. <laughs> Unless they are a trusted person. Any random ass person or someone that is trying to do things or make you do things with us, don't listen to them. Anyway, so, coming out of that. Now, the whole experience and doing the research that I actually needed to do originally that I didn't really know I should do and... Things like that. It's long story. Long story. Um, I knew that the left-hand path and working with demons was for me. I knew I was in the right place. I knew I would never really agree with being like a Wiccan or something like that. I had nothing against Wicca. Not at all. It's a great place to start and and it's, um, it's good stuff. For the people who resonate with that, you're good. You're cool. Awesome. It's just not for me. It's not my thing. I mean, I'm all for the balance part of it. The god and the goddess kind of a thing. Masculine, feminine. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> I knew that this was right for me. I felt that call. And since you're here or watching this, likely you feel that call too. That the ancient ones, the demons, or some people call them ancient gods. They want you here. They want you to join the path. And I felt that way. I really did. But I was afraid. I was very afraid. And coming out of such a bad situation, you can't blame me for being afraid. So, okay, so I come out of a situation where Lucifer is being used as a weapon against me, and he's made out to be all these things that he's not, and all sorts of shit. And then I want to go looking for the real one. Some people call me crazy for that. Now me... Uh, well, I wouldn't call myself not crazy, because, well... I'm kind of crazy, <laughs> but I think we're all a little bit crazy, but I feel like that's very upfront. And for me, it has been a point that him and every spirit that had their name dragged through the mud in that entire experience, because there's more than just him, but he got the most of it. While I don't have to, I would like to to approach them as time goes on and address it. The elephant in the room, so to speak. But back then I was afraid to do that. Very, very afraid. I was afraid he was angry at me. I was afraid he'd think I was weak or something or naive for being so foolish. I just, I couldn't imagine why he would want to work with me. And yet, all the research I had done and all the feelings I'm feeling point to him calling me. Like, hardcore calling me. <sighs> I mean, to the point where I can't get him out of my head. 
and I'm seeing his name everywhere. So many recommended videos, so many things coming up where they, you know, where they really don't have to. I mean, I find myself thinking about him all the time and circles, going around in circles and anxious up in, the, up in my head. I was afraid. I was afraid it was just me. It was wishful thinking. I was afraid it was just me tricking myself into thinking, oh yeah, he maybe he does want to talk to me. Maybe he would, wouldn't be angry with me. Maybe he would be understanding. Maybe he knows about all this and he doesn't like my ex or something. I was afraid it was me. But, uh, no, it was not just me. <laughs> and this, it's one of the things I'm thankful that, um, is patient, sort of a deity or demon. So, let's see, let's see, or Archangel, what, how, whatever, really. And he has a lot of forms, a lot of people say different things. Anyway, so, let's see. Six months? Six months. About six to seven months, actually. Like, between six and seven months. That is how long I was up in my head. Round and round in circles. That's a long time. <laughs> That's a long time in human time, you know? So... All that time, I had just been kind of preparing myself for it. Like, I got to the point where I'm thinking, yes, I need to do this. I need to do this. I'm getting more confident in that notion, but I didn't know how to do it. And it was during my New Year's ritual where I was thanking everyone for the year and setting the, the intention for the year ahead um, that he actually came into my ritual See, the way I did it was I had several different candles set up. I had candles for angels that were watching over me. Yes, angels. <laughs> it's, it, they're not all Christian, I promise. Um, spirit guides, um, ancestors, and um, I think it was, I think I had some for... And I think I had the moon, the sun, yes, the moon and the sun, because I like lunar and solar energies as well. And then I think that was it for specifics, but I had one other candle lit. And I called that my uh, shadow candle, so to speak. That was for, for beings that were trying to get my attention or have been helping me that I have not yet called upon or I have not yet acknowledged. And I have learned to take the crackling sound of the flame, a lot of people will say this, as conversation. Someone's trying to talk to you. And at that point, um, that candle started to crackle. There's no reason for it to crackle, but um, it started to crackle. So I'm like, okay, somebody wants to talk. Who is this? Being the shadow candle, it could have been anyone. And lo and behold, when I decided I was going to, um, you know, set myself in trance and ask for a name, Lucifer is what I what I heard, and uh, I heard it in my head <laughs> telepathically. A lot of spirits communicate telepathically, not just clairaudiently. Um, that is usually how I hear him. I think that's... I think I don't know if I've ever heard him speak outside of that. I don't think so. <laughs> Looking back. But um, I did the sigil check and everything. The sigil check is like... you. It's like you, you ask someone to show their ID. Uh, spirit cannot show you another spirit's sigil. If they try to, it's going to come out distorted in some kind of a way. There might be pieces missing or rearranged or it might be upside down or whatever else. And that means you have a liar because they can't do that. So it's like imperative that that happens when you, when you 
or working with spirits and you're not sure who you're talking to and everything, try that. There are other ways too, but try that. That's a good one. And lo and behold, that passed. I was floored. <laughs> I was shocked. I was like, oh my God. And you know, for like four more days, four more days, I sat on it. Like, I need to do this now. If this was true, if I'm not nuts and not just hopeful, and that was him, I need to do something about that. <laughs> I need to do something about that. So, um, I ended up getting into a, a thing. I met a guy on Facebook that was starting a thing, and this was my first coven experience. Whew. I met some good people through it, but he ended up being a nut. Oh, a nut. Super nut, actually. Super nut. Anyway, but that led me into beginning to work with him closely, very closely. And whereas he went off the nut end, I did not go off the nut end. And we got away from him as he really went off the nut end. That is a long story. I have a lot of stories. But um, ever since then, I've been working with him very closely. And he has changed things in my life a lot. And he has not been like overly harsh on me in certain ways I mean he's he obviously he's hard on me by the ways of I know when I need to do something or I need to change something or I'm I'm about to make an excuse for something if I'm talking with him I can't lie to him to lie to him is to lie to myself and what does that prove nothing nothing whatsoever so other than that part, he has shown me a great deal of kinship and friendship and closeness. A lot of closeness. And he's helped me to learn how to trust again. Or, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm fully healed, but, I mean, yet. <laughs> but I'm a lot better than I was. He's helped me to learn how to be able to let go, how to trust, how to be able to allow spirits and people close to me in a way that I can still be guarded, but I don't have to necessarily raise my walls up sky high. <laughs> he's very easy to trust. I don't think he's ever lied to me. I don't think he has a reason to lie to me or anything. He's very trustworthy. He's very understanding. He's very good with beginners. He loves to teach. And, um, he's comforting as well. There have been times where I have needed comfort, whether it is in ritual or he had come forward and was there to comfort me at a time where I was in a bad shape or a bad head space. And he was there for me. Along this path, you will find a family that I can vouch for. The spirits that I work with and continue to work with, they have shown me family outside of my own. On Earth, as a human, as me, most of my family, I feel like I'm an alien. Not all. Most of my family, though. They don't know who I am, really. They don't really understand me. Things are distant. It's always been that way. I've always been that way with people, too. Other people. I'm weird. <laughs> I'm just me. And I can get along with a lot of different kinds of people, but it's always arm's length. But this takes it deeper. They have the ability to see you for who you are. And to accept you for all the weirdness that you are. And they will help you to accept yourself. That is one thing that I've definitely learned so far further is more self-acceptance. 
things that I was shaming myself for that I shouldn't have been or things that I was like upturning my nose at concepts that I was like, why, why do people like this? Why are people doing this? And then realizing, wait a second, wait a second, I'm projecting <laughs> and all sorts of things. You will learn so much. You will find a family. You will find friends. You will find everything that you needed more. More than you bargained for. Trust me, I have already found more than I bargained for. And in retrospect, I haven't been on this path for as long as some people have. So, best of luck to you. If you've got questions, let me know. I have plenty of more stories with him as well, so this will not be my last video on him by no means. But, um, if you've got questions, let me know. You know where to find me. Description below is my email, comments, go ahead. And uh, if you're looking for services of any kind, check out the Facebook page for me and my business partner. We'll fix you up at a good price, too. We don't overcharge. So, have a good day. Blessings to you. Blessings to your family. And um, much luck to you if you decide to embark.